you guys say so you work primarily in eight areas and so you yeah. work with food security uh, secure mm -hmm. housing health and hygiene ed education income generation child rights community connections and spiritual strength and I found I found it fascinating that you actually don't feed the kids like these kids are hungry and the normal or the you know the first response to that is oh let me give you something to eat first but you guys don't mm -hmm. do that no we don't do that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so talk talk to we, us about we, that is there a reason why uh, because I've seen a lot of organizations hey let me get the basic needs met mm -hmm. and then let's work on the education and and some of these other things but you guys take a different approach so why is it that you don't uh, you know offer them food just to fill their stomachs at first. Yeah, so these kids been, uh, I heard that being the, the, before they enrolling the Zoe program, before they started their own business, I told them, how did you survive all these days? They said, I, I used to work here, I used to work there, and I didn't get a, a lot of money. I want, really wanted to start my own business. Mm. So what I, I say is like, I will give you an opportunity, I'll give you an invest, some investment so that you could r uh, run your business. Mm. And then you should take care of your family. And then they say, oh, yeah, this is a good opportunity. And then they'll start their business. And after that, we have a program facilitators for every 10 groups. They'll watch the kids. They will uh, look for the kids. Mm -hmm. And then these groups, they'll meet twice a week, uh, once a week on Sundays, so that the, all the groups can gather as a family with their siblings. So that that time, we will say like, oh, we are doing this health and hygiene program. We want to give free water tanks, free medical checkups. And we, this is only for kids who are doing really well mm -hmm. and their siblings can get be treated by free mm -hmm. like that. And then so all these year plan, we will do child rights for the uh, current kids who are in the group and their for siblings. How like uh, in child rights, we will bring some government people from human trafficking and some some of the child rights, they'll teach them how to get their IDs, how to get their identity with the government. And then we will also help the education, but a small, like we will give education support to the siblings, not to the kid who is doing business. We will give the help to their siblings. Mm. So we will tell them, we will give these help as a reward. If you're doing well business, if you're doing good in the program, we will give you a reward to your siblings. And also we will give a, a food security opportunity. Like we will give some seeds so that you can do some agriculture and raise your uh, own food and save your own food. Like, you know what, w uh, this pandemic is going on and you go we won't get any food there. So you can raise your own food and save your own food. That's how food security work. And then for some of the siblings, we will give them like, a, hey, do you like, are you interested to raise some chickens? So we will give a uh, three chickens so that they can do animal husbandry. Mm. And we will give a cow, a, a rabbit, so that they can raise their animal husbandry. Mm. And then also the most important is we will do the meetings. Like all the kids, once in two months, they'll come and we will do a, a business conference kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And I want to talk about that because it sounds like you guys are really huge on the community aspect of it. Uh, mm -hmm. It sounds like these, the, number one, there's a group formed uh, community that these kids can be involved with. And then they all kind of come together and a couple times a week. And then you have a monthly community, big meeting, it sounds like a business mm -hmm. conference. And so like, mm -hmm. is that you think that's like a lifeblood of these kids? Because again, going back to the beginning, a lot of these kids feel isolated. So you yes. guys kind of yeah. take that. And if they can do this together, right? I mean, um, mm -hmm. the saying goes, we can do a lot more together than we can by ourselves. And that's where, you know, the inspiration comes, the motivation. If he can do it, maybe I, maybe I can do it. Is that kind of why you guys do the community? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's how, like when they formed as a group, they already felt like, oh, we have a family. Like we have responsibility, we have a leaders for our group. And then when we combined all the groups, they'll see a lot of kids and they'll see a lot of uh, young people who are like them, them, like they've been feel like, oh, I am the only one feeling this in my life. I am the only one facing challenges, but there are many a lot of kids like you. They'll show up there and then they'll talk, they'll meet each other and they, 
talk what uh, what business you're doing and what I'm doing like that. So they feel more comfortable and they feel that oh someone is for us for our family. Yeah. yeah. No, I love that. I mean, that's exactly what we do in business. So it sounds like you guys really take the business concepts and mm -hmm. you really incorporate that into Zoe Empowers and it really yeah. uh, is is helping and kind of goes back to uh, instead of giving them a meal, you might give them a chicken and now you can feed yeah. them for many days rather than just today, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. No, I love that. Uh, so, and then the other things are, uh, what's, what's, um, so we talked about some of the other areas, uh, we talked about the feeding, the housing, um, health and hygiene, and then the income generation obviously is, is big. And, um, I want to talk about just some of the success stories, I guess. So I don't know how long Zoe and Powers has been around. You mentioned before the show that you've been involved um, maybe three plus years now, but uh, the percentages that I was reading on your website were like remarkable, like the success rates, mm -hmm. because a lot of times yeah. someone might look at this like, oh, maybe one out of a hundred people might, you know, get through and, and be successful. But you guys are can't, are crushing it a lot more than that. So talk to us about what are some of the statistics that you've seen when someone enters into the program? So I think Zoe has uh, been working been many years, like 10 plus, 10 plus years. So there are a lot of successful stories from Africa and then India. So uh, it is still a new program in Vizag, but it's already almost three years. And then next year, I'm going to graduate some groups and, uh, and they'll be successful. So, so uh, in these three years, I found some kids, they been successful in span of six months. And I saw some kids with their business, they been successful in a year. So uh, in the first year, so many kids been successful, but in the second year, a lot of kids successful, but because of this pandemic, many kids, they lost their business. But uh, I want to tell you one of the success story of uh, a boy. His name is Devaker. And uh, he lost his mom uh, when he was seven years old. Like he was, uh, his mom has HIV so that uh, she, she was died with HIV. And then her father uh, took care of him. And then suddenly his father died because he didn't know that he has HIV. So he has two old, uh, younger siblings and then him by himself on the road. And then he's been working in a restaurant as a server, like a cleaning the tables and cleaning the plates, dishes. And then he's all these three siblings, they dropped out of the school because they didn't have money. And then they found a grandmother who lives in the slums. And then they asked her to sleep in their home so that they can help her so that they've been doing that. And then one of the day, Devakar found Zoe meeting is going on in his community. So he came to the uh, meeting and he was so excited about the opportunities that Zoe is giving. And he enrolled to the program and he started his business in the first year with a food truck. And then he went to a business training through a chef as an assistant. And then he learned all the uh, cooking style, and then he started a small food truck on the footpath, like a sidewalk on the road. He started his micro, he, he received a grant, and then he started his food truck. And then he's been cooking and selling the food to all the, uh, you know, carpenters and the workers who works in the community. So he sell the food to them. And then in six months after his business, uh, he he able to help by himself and his siblings. And he sent them to back to the school in span of six months. Mm. And then he was very successful with his business. And then after this COVID hit, the government did everything, lockdown. And then so the cops told him, don't open your business on the road. Please shut your uh, business. And then he was so depressed. He was so uh, like, uh, how can I run my family? How can I help my siblings? How can I where is my daily income, everyday income? So he was so oppressed. And then he got an idea that cops are working uh, in a day. So he started a mobile, like on a, a motorbike. He started uh, cooking his food from home. 
and a tea and coffee and then he started a motorbike business and he sell the same food and coffee tea to the cops who told him to shut his business <laughs> and then he went to them and he to, he get, he he sell the coffee tea food to them and that's how he survived during the pandemic wow. and he was the one of the successful stories from our one of the program one of the groups yeah wow it sounds like he was super creative and i love yes. that yeah. because uh whenever we we're all we have these challenges and but if you can like sit down and think about it and, and get creative and that's that's amazing and i just love the story yeah. that he served the people that shut him down the cops so <laughs> yeah <laughs> no that's awesome i love i love that story um and i'm sure there's other lots of other successful stories guys so make sure you go to yeah. uh your website is zoeempowers.org. Is that yes. correct? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and check that out and how you can also get involved. Thank you so much for checking out the Brett Snodgrass channel. If you like this video, please slam on that like button. And if you really like it, then subscribe to our channel here. And remember to leave us a comment below. And I'm going to try my hardest to reply to all the comments. Thank you guys so much. This is why I do what I do. Every single week, I come out with content that focuses on success, freedom, and living out your purpose. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.